I'm Nate with Outrageous with Nate. I travel the globe searching for people and ideas that are super creative and innovative. And that has taken me to some pretty awesome places, like Broadway to see set design, to architecture in Spain. And then of course, I'm really passionate about animating episodes from Frida Kahlo to Van Gogh. I've been working with the team over at MSI on a new computer, the Creator Z16. I am one of the few who've been able to get one of these computers before anybody else. I knew it was coming today. I'm gonna take this bad boy. We're gonna head up to my treehouse studio and man, I'm gonna put this thing through the ringer as a creator. Let's get this thing unboxed. Coming up. As an artist, one of the things I love is sweet logo design. And MSI killed it with this dragon. I love this thing. This is a gorgeous computer. Already super pumped. I can see it's got all the ports I need, especially USB-C. It's got two of them, which is amazing. Also has a micro SD card, which is gonna be really handy. The other thing this computer has, which I'm really pumped about, is the screen size. It's 16 by 10. Obviously, it's a little bit bigger than 16 by nine, the average uh, laptop screen, which is gonna be more screen real estate for me, which I cannot wait to use. Let's get started. You and I, we are actually going to be working on an episode I just filmed on Bob Ross. Um, I'm also going to add a little bit of animation to this just because I honestly want to see what this thing can do because if I can edit portably, that's pretty freaking awesome. Let's get going. First, I'm moving all of my clips over onto my timeline, doing some basic trimming, just getting everything into a rough cut situation. As you can see on the far right in the uh, middle, I have full turned on, which means I'm previewing everything in full 4K, really pushing the RAM and the processor on this machine. And in just a minute here, I'm going to kind of pick and choose where I'd like to put a little bit of animation. The other thing that I'm noticing right out of the gate is rendering time. One of my pet peeves, especially with Adobe products, is my gosh, just to see the stuff I'm working on half the time I have to have it render, and then I can actually preview it. So what I wanted to see was once I have all of this on the timeline and I have it previewing in 4K, if I hit the space bar, will it actually play in real time so that I can watch it? And the answer is yes, it is. Speed is everything for somebody like me because I gotta move fast. So I have my composition here and I have this clip of Bob Ross's house. Uh, well, actually the house where he filmed the Joy of Painting. So what I'm wanting to do is break this piece apart because I say in the actual episode, like we're on holy ground, which to me it is because it's Bob Ross. I actually have a, uh, this layer as a screenshot, 4K screenshot, and I've chopped up the different pieces into layers as you can see. So so what I want, I'm gonna add these like lay, rays of light. They're gonna come, you know, behind the house itself. I'm gonna export all of these into ping files and then I'm gonna bring them into Premiere. What you're gonna notice already, right? is that I've got Premiere open, I've got Photoshop, and actually got my mail open, I've got different web browsers open. But the cool part is, this computer, you can actually tell it to focus on certain programs. So right now, I've told this computer to really focus on Adobe. So that way, the main part of the processor and the RAM are focusing on these tasks, which so far, I'm pretty freaking impressed. Okay, so what I've done, I've put all these different assets onto the different layers. I also have brought in now, uh, we've got a dove flying, which I just, it's pre-keyed uh, animation that I created. I have the light rays, as you can see in the background. What I did is I layered that the blue sky just over, as you can see here on my timeline, just over the actual animation of the rays, which is cool because I diffused it just a little bit, uh, turned on the opacity. So I'm gonna go ahead, hit the space bar on this bad boy. Let's play it and see how much lag we get in that instant play without rendering at all. This is absolutely crazy. So when I hit the space bar, boom. I mean, that's insane. All of these layers are working independently without having to render, which is pretty amazing. So I have an idea, a way that I would like to try just pushing the processor a little bit more. I'm not gonna go all out animation on this episode because it really doesn't need it. But what I wanna add, there is this cool section right here that I'm working on that's talking about the fact that Bob Ross, get this, right? Uh, take a huge whiff of VIX right before he would hit on screen, which is really bizarre, but I thought it was pretty cool. Reenact this kind of funny dramatization. We're gonna create a green screen shot. I'm gonna head down to my basement green screen studio. Funny enough that I call this the green screen studio 
And then if you can see in the back there, gymatorium. So it's a greenatorium, I don't know. Anyway, this works for me. I've been doing this for like almost eight years down here. Anytime I need to green screen something, um, I stop going to a studio and I just set myself up down here. Super simple setup. Um, it's crazy effective and honestly it keeps me moving super super fast right i got everything set up is this outfit not absolutely freaking amazing it's so perfect got my vix ready to go so hey let's get filming this get up to the treehouse Okay, so what I did after I got all of my footage imported from the green screen in the basement, I now have three separate clips on the timeline as you can see right here. First thing I need to do is use an opacity. We're gonna key out some of this mess in the background. So just follow along and then uh, we'll stop and pause just before I start to key everything out. What I'm doing right now is cropping everything that I don't think I'm going to need. If you notice, my uh, camera is set up to do a cinematic look, as in it makes everything kind of flat, and that way it's really easy for me to bump up the contrast, especially the blacks, which is what I want to do. I want to control that more in post than I do in camera. So that's what I'm going to do next using the Fast Color Corrector in Premiere. Next, I'm going to add the Ultra Key. Boom, right there, it almost takes most of it out, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn this into an alpha channel so I can see, now you can really tell there's some of those aspects missing. Let's make a few minor adjustments here. So what I'm gonna do first is actually crop Bob out of this thing and then I'll have myself here in the perfect position. So I'm gonna turn that layer off. I'm gonna go to my Bob layer. I'm gonna use the opacity tool. All right, Bob's gone. Turn this layer back on already. Look at that fluid, looks great. Now what we're gonna do for these next two shots is just uh, you know copy and paste those attributes. Boom, there we go. The test. Let's go ahead and hit the space bar, which is gonna play these frames. I have not rendered anything. What that means is we're gonna watch this in 4K real time. So what you see is that there is no lag whatsoever. This is previewing beautifully. All right, I'm pretty impressed. I love how the processor and uh, RAM are working together really well on this computer. As you might know, Adobe is heavy on the RAM. So seeing how the Creator Z16 can actually balance out those two things so that I can actually move faster as a creator is pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, I told you I wanted to add a little bit of an animation piece to this just to push the processor a little bit harder. I'm going to animate Bob, a very simple 2D animation. We're not gonna go crazy with this. Bob only had 26 to 27 minutes to actually make an entire painting, which is nuts. I wanted to kind of simulate what that might look like in a fun way. All right, so we're gonna get started here. Just follow along as I'm going to actually build this thing in After Effects. So what I've done here is I've actually cut Bob up, if you will, into several different pieces. That way um, I can actually animate all of these and I'm gonna use the puppet tool because in After Effects, I just feel like this tool would be perfect for what I'm doing. So let's get started with that. Using the lasso tool, I'm going to connect all of Bob's attributes to the body itself, the arms and the head. So now I've locked all the layers to the body, as you can see. So that way I'm gonna animate Bob kind of popping up here and then he's gonna be over here at the painting. I wanna line him up. I want him to start on the left side of the canvas here and I want him to work to the right. So I'm gonna actually copy and paste this layer that I locked because I'm actually going to create another one where this mask is only going to be over the painting itself so that I can animate it left to right to kind of appear as if he's actually painting it. All right, next I need to add a layer uh, above this that's actually going to be behind and covering up the painting that's on the other layer. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to then add a new layer, but I'm gonna make it a shape. And I want the fill to be sort of a canvas color. I'm gonna turn this back on. So now you see how that painting, right? is on and off. So even if I start to change the opacity by just scrolling, uh, hitting T there, see how you can see I can make that appear. So I'm really gonna be able to control where this painting appears as Bob is kind of painting left to right. I'm going to use the puppet pin tool and place a point both on the wrist and on the elbow. So as you can see already, right? I can control just using those two puppet pen tools. Now I gotta be careful, right? I'm not, I'm not gonna go all out with this. 
and create some static bars uh, that will kind of simulate bones. I'm going to make this kind of more like a Gumby, like, you know, animated character. Maybe he moves weirdly, but that's going to be perfect for just moving his brush around. So two keyframes have already been, already been created for my uh, two pins. I'm going to move that arm up and then back down. Now, as you see back here, right, I got to watch the shoulder so that it's actually in the correct position. So already, if I go back here, up and down and up and down and up and down. Now, I want that to look very fluid. So one way to do that is easy in. Easy ease is what it's technically called. So I'm going to do that by just doing function F9 and that changes those keyframes to that so that when I actually play these back they're nice and fluid. So I'm going to keep working on this. I'm going to jump back up. I'm going to fast forward a minute here so that I can add all the other different keyframes I need for those puppet pin tools um, and then I'm going to move Bob left to right. As you can see, I have the clock that appears to remind us, right? Like we're talking about just how fast Bob would paint these crazy paintings. I added a little smoke so it looks like his, you know, his paintbrush is on fire because he's going so fast. As you scrub across here, you see that paint, right? That paintbrush moving left to right. He kind of throws it up because maybe he's throwing his turpentine off. I don't know. All right, so the real test here is I can see the processor is working really hard and the RAM, obviously, to pre-render this out so that I can actually see what it might look like in the end. Um, I have this sent to auto and I wanted to just do it half render, uh, which is still pushing. Most systems, I have to turn it way down to a third um, for it to even do it. Do you see down here the green line on the timeline? That's indicating where I'm spitting the space bar to start and stop. But the minute I hit it, this computer is constantly working in the background to render all of those frames out and to watch, so I can watch it in real time, which is absolutely phenomenal. Game changing. Again, I can do this from a coffee shop. I don't have to have some massive desktop set up in order to do that. And I can see a lot of my timeline thanks to the bigger screen. I went ahead and rendered out this entire episode, which on my big desktop typically takes about 45 minutes. And guess what? This computer only took 22, literally half the amount of time, which is game changing. It's gonna get me to the next project, which is awesome. A few points that I love about the Creator Z16. One is the weight. It's incredibly light considering just how much is packed inside this bad boy and the fact it's made of metal. The other is the ports. It's got everything I need to film and edit on site. And speaking of editing, the screen size. By far my favorite point about this. It is nice to have that extra, just a little bit extra screen real estate that gives me more room when I'm editing, which you know if you are a creator like me is key. I cannot wait to use this and honestly I'm going to be using this more than my very, very overpriced desktop. Pretty amazing product. If you'd like to check out the episode that I edited with this, the Bob Ross episode, it is on my YouTube channel where I'd love to see you subscribe and check out what I'm making. Until next time, be outrageous.